Who is God to you? What one word would you use to describe God? Welcome to the Gospel Message radio program. My name is Wes Hepner, and I'm so glad you're here today for these next 15 minutes to listen to God's Word and to find out really who He is. A lot of us have been Christians or maybe accepted Christ a long time ago, but has our personal relationship with God really grown? Have we gotten to know Him? And do we have a personal relationship with him? And this is what he desires from us. He wants to have a relationship with us. John 17 verse 3 says, And this is eternal life, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ. And so we want to go further into the attributes of God today. We want to go through 15 attributes We've gone through the first 10, and we want to go through number 11 and 12 today, about that God is merciful and God is gracious. And I want everybody to understand that this list is not complete. It's probably impossible to make a complete list. But hopefully, as we go through these, you can make them personal for yourself. If God is this, how does this change my life? How does this help me? How should I be thankful for this? And this is not a list you need to memorize so you can pass a test. It's an encouragement that you know the God of the universe on a personal level, who he is, what he has done for you, what he is doing for you, and what he will continue doing for you for all eternity. And of course, we've done a number of programs like this already. And this, I think, is number five in the attributes of God. We'll have one more coming after this. And maybe it gives you encouragement to keep listening for the next week to see what's next. Before we go further into the message, let's take time to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your mercy and grace. Lord, we thank you that although we sin, although we fall, although we are not faithful, you are faithful. You are true. You want to forgive us. You want to have a relationship with us. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for us and making it possible that we can have a relationship with the almighty God of the universe, the creator of heaven and earth. Thank you for this radio program. Thank you for the opportunity to share your word. I pray that you would bless it. I pray that your Holy Spirit would guide it and all that listen would be encouraged and drawn to you. I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We want to go through two more attributes of God today. But before we do that, I want to do a short review of the ones we've already done. And so let's start with number one that we went through a couple of weeks ago. Number one, God is infinite. That means he's self-existing without origin. He has no beginning or end. And we read Colossians 1 verse 17. It says, and he is before all things and by him all things consist. Number two, God is immutable. That means he never changes. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6 says, For I am the Lord, I change not. God does not change. From the Old Testament to the New Testament, from now to eternity, his character never changes. His plans do not change. His promises do not change. Number three, God is self-sufficient. He has no needs. John chapter 5 verse 26 says, For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. God has never been in need of anything. And because God is self-sufficient, we can go to him to satisfy all our needs. Number four, God is omnipotent. That means he is all-powerful. Psalm 33 verse 6 says, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. God's power never changes. It's there for us today. Number five, God is omniscient. That means he is all-knowing. Psalm 46 verses 9 and 10 says, Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand and I will do all my good pleasure. God knows everything and he has never learned anything. And because God is all-knowing, we can trust that he knows everything we're going through today and everything we will go through tomorrow. You can truly trust in this God. Number six, God is omnipresent. That means he is always everywhere. Psalm 139 verses 7 to 10 says, Where can I go from your spirit, or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. 
If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there will your hand lead me and your right hand will hold me. God is everywhere at all places, at all times. And this ought to bring deep comfort to Christians who struggle with loneliness and deep sorrow. In a very real way, God is always near us. Number seven, God is wise. He is full of perfect, unchanging wisdom. Romans 11 verse 33 says, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. The fact that God can never be more wise means he's always doing the wisest thing in our lives. No plan we could make for our lives could be better than the plan he has already crafted and is carrying out for us. We might not understand his ways today, but we can trust that because God is infinitely wise, he truly is working all things out in the best possible way. God is wise. Number eight, God is faithful. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9 says, Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. I love this verse. It explains how God is faithful. He keeps his covenant of love. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 13 says, If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. The fact that God is faithful means he never forgets anything, never fails to do anything he has set out to do, never changes his mind or takes back a promise. Number nine, God is good. He is infinitely, unchangingly kind and full of goodwill. Psalm 34 verse 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I think we as Christians should present this attribute of God so much more. Not to deny that we suffer, but that through our sufferings, God is good. And it's wonderful to think that through all of these other attributes of power, of Him knowing everything, being everywhere, having all wisdom, never changing, that God uses all of these for good. Number 10, God is just. He is infinitely, unchangeably right and perfect in all he does. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 4 says, The rock, his work is perfect for all his ways are just, a God of faithfulness and without injustice, righteous and upright is he. God always handles things in the right way and in the best way for each person. Maybe not the same way, but his ways are just and right all the time, every time. And now getting to the new attributes we want to go over this week. Number 11 and 12. Number 11, God is merciful. He is infinitely, unchangeably compassionate and kind. Romans 9 verse 15 and 16 says, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it does not depend on the man who wills or the man who runs, but on God who has mercy. Mercy is we don't get what we deserve. See, we all deserve condemnation. We all deserve hell. But God, in his great love for us, while we were yet sinners, the Bible says, died for us. There was no right on the sinner's part to the saving mercy of the Most High God. Had the rebel been doomed at once to eternal life, he would have justly merited the doom. And if delivered from wrath, Sovereign love alone has found a cause, for there was none in the sinner himself. Without the mercy of God, we would have no hope of heaven. Because of our disobedient hearts, we deserve death. The Bible says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and the wages of sin is death. But because of mercy, we don't get what we deserve. Instead, because of the mercy of God, we get life through faith in Christ. Isn't it wonderful? A quick story. A mother once approached Napoleon, seeking a pardon for her son. The emperor replied that the young man had committed a certain offense twice, and justice demanded death. But I don't ask for justice, the mother explained. I plead for mercy. But your son does not deserve mercy, Napoleon replied. Sir, the woman cried, it would not be mercy if he deserved it, and mercy is all I ask for. Well then, the emperor said, I will have mercy. 
and he spared the woman's son. See, when we accept the free gift of salvation, we are asking God for mercy. We don't deserve this free gift. We could never pay for our debt for our sin. But God made a way of escape for us through his mercy. And his mercy does not end at salvation. It continues through our life as a Christian. I know in my life how often God has been merciful to me. He has not given me what I deserve, and I am so thankful for his mercy. Beloved listener, have you experienced the mercy of God? Many of us have maybe been brought up with the idea that God is a harsh God, and when we do something wrong, he is ready to punish us. But so much more, he is ready to forgive us, to restore the relationship with him that was separated by sin. God treats us so much better than we deserve, and that's because God is merciful. Number 11, God is merciful. Number 12, God is gracious. God is infinitely inclined to spare the guilty. Psalm 145 verse 8 says, The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and great in loving kindness. If mercy is not getting what we deserve, that's damnation. Grace is getting what we don't deserve, that's eternal life. Because grace is part of who God is, and not just an action he bestows, it means we can trust that grace is eternal. His grace is something we do not earn or lose. Ephesians 2 verse 8 says, For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. While all of humanity benefits from common grace, only those who profess, believe, and put their faith in Christ receive saving grace. This is what results in our sanctification and glorification of God, that we might live for him and enjoy him for all eternity. God is gracious to us in that he gives us eternal life as a free gift, something we cannot earn, something we in no way deserve. His grace is truly sufficient. I saw this advertisement on the side of a plumber's van in South Africa. It said, there is no place too deep, too dark, or too dirty for us to handle. That's an example of God's grace. Wherever you are in your life today, God's grace is for you. There's no place too deep, too dark, or too dirty. A short illustration, and then we'll close. During the late 1800s, English evangelist Henry Moorhouse made several trips to America to preach. On one of these occasions, he was taking a walk through a poor section of the city when he noticed a small boy coming out of a store with a pitcher of milk. Just then the boy slipped and fell, breaking the pitcher and spilling the milk all over the sidewalk. Moorhouse rushed to the youngster's side and found him unhurt, but terrified. My mama'll whip me, he cried. The preacher suggested that they try to put the pitcher back together, but the pieces of glass would not stay together. The boy kept crying. Finally, Moorhouse picked up the youngster and carried him to a nearby store, where the preacher purchased a new pitcher. Then he returned to the dairy store and had the pitcher washed and filled with milk. With that done, he carried both the boy and the pitcher home. Putting the youngster down in the front porch, Moorhouse handed him the pitcher and asked, Now will your mama whip you? A wide smile spread over his tear-stained face. Oh, no, sir, because it's a lot better than the pitcher we had before. And this, my friend, is a picture of the grace of God. God gives us something we don't deserve. God gives us something so much better than we had. God is gracious, and that is why you and I can have eternal life. God is gracious, and his gift of eternal life is through his grace. In closing, have you accepted this gift of grace? You must realize that you are lost, that you need something better for your life, that you are on the road to condemnation. Without mercy and grace, you have no chance. But my beloved friend, God is merciful. God is gracious. He is waiting for you to accept his free gift of salvation that was made possible by his son's death on the cross. Jesus died for you. He loves you. He wants you to accept his gift so that he can have a relationship with you. He can know you and you can know him and you can have eternal life. My name is Wes Hepner. Thanks for listening to the Gospel Message radio program. I pray that you will be blessed this week. I pray that the grace 
and mercy of God will be evident in your life.